Okay, so what is your name? Uh, my name is Claire Nicholson. My maiden name is Ince. I was born Claire Ince. And when were you born? Uh, on the 23rd of July. I was born on the 23rd of July, 1927. And where were you born? South of Trinidad. I was born on Lewis Street, number one Lewis Street, that is the corner of Lewis Street and Rison Road. Mm -hmm. At that time, across from Rison Road was what we call the Harbour Scheme. It was undeveloped, I mean, we used to go and catch crabs and that sort of thing there. It, it, you know, it was um, soft soil and that sort of thing there because it was eventually it became reclaimed land and um, when the Americans came here to, to set up their bases in 1971 that was part of the, that whole Woodbrook area there on, up, um, south of, on the southern side of Rison Road was um, drained and they put barracks for American troops there. So what is your name? My name is Howard Newton Nichols. And how old are you? Um, when were you born? I was born in 1932, so in two months time I'll be 85. Now tell me, where were you born? Where did you grow up? I was born in Charlottesville, in Tobago, on Man of War Bay, one of the most beautifully landlocked harbors in the world, fishing district, and grew up there until I was 23 years old. Yes, yeah, so tell me again, what is your full name? Tafiran Barkaran Singh. And how old are you? I tell you that now, I'm 65 old. Okay, what year were you born? 1929. Very good. And where did you grow up? In Tangerine. Oh. So what is your name? Petroy Ethelbert Thomas. And how old are you? What year, when were you born? Today, today I am 95. Okay. 22nd of April, 1922. I don't know date of birth. So 22nd of April, 2017. Um, 95. When you're born? Huh? When were you born? <laughs> when were you born? How old are you? Oh, old age. I know the age you go up. Mm -hmm. And then you to So, the age you going up? Huh? For me, I don't know yet. But you, time to you go to have love on your name. I said, you say yes, look, so and so, 1908. I look at her, oh, I'm the dear. <laughs> Tell me a little about your family. Well, I am number seven of eight children. My parents, Monty and Etta Ince, had um, eight of us, four boys, four girls. And um, yes, we were a happy family. Please tell me about your school days in La Brea. Oh, well, in La Brea, where we lived, you know, my father moved to the Trinidad Lake Asphalt Company in Brighton. And um, we had the, the company's houses, and we lived there. And there were many children. The the families there had so many children, 
and we didn't have much financial but we enjoyed our childhood tell me about your family like your brothers sisters how many were you, were you? well originally well actually my father was married twice he and he had seven children from his first wife and seven children from his second wife um, the, 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 the time lapse between the death of his first wife and his marriage to his second wife. I mean, she was very much younger than he was, that's my mother. And uh, there were seven of us, but actually five survived, I remember. There were five of us as a, as a child growing up. And um, well, there are just two of us left now, that is my brother and myself. Well, I, my eldest sister, she became a musician and that sort. Well, I'm, I'm a music teacher, you know, and well, she was a teacher and then specialized in music. And um, a composer, she did one of the national songs is composed by her, God Bless Our Nation, was um, her composition. Actually, she did it as her composition for when they had a competition for choosing for a national anthem and the independence of Trinidad and Tobago, and she submitted that. And while it was not selected for the national anthem, they were sufficiently impressed that it was declared the national song. So that is part and parcel of that. So tell me a bit about your parents. Oh, my parents, are, uh, my daddy is the last of five children. His parents thought they wouldn't go to have any son. All the others were girls. So when he was born, they were overjoyed and he was a spoiled child. My mother was, um, well, he was from Charlottesville. My mother was from Palatuville, smaller, remote district in Tobago also. So tell me about your brothers and sisters and school days where you went to school. Well, I am the eldest boy in a family of 12, but second child. And because of the size of the family, too much of my time was spent helping mom with children and hushing babies and this type of thing. I regret it even up to this day. So you had a lot of brothers and sisters? No, I had one brother and three sisters. And what did your family do, what your parents did when you were growing up? In the, the school, and with me, I oh, go to school. Oh, you went to school, and yeah. what? You where did your father work? My father was a tailor. Oh, interesting. And your mother, she stayed at home to take care of the children. Mm, all day. Mm -hmm. So please tell me um, about your childhood. Who were your parents and what did they do? My father was Simeon Thomas. My mother, before she married him, she was Teresa Farris, F-A-R-R-I-S. Farris. She belonged to a village in Kumana. And he belonged at the time to Grandmother. So he used to come and kid I'm there caught in my walking from Grandmother to Kumana. Oh, he's on there at night giving the story. You know, there's no electricity. Also, I need a new spoke. So he used to walking in the dark and dark, and the road came. Make a turn here, but there was no light, so he gone up on the bank, come back down, and feel his way through, take until he got to where he was caught in. Mm. And they got married, and they lived in Granny there, she moved down to his home, my was home. <laughs> so I spent my first years in Granny there. I remember they were like, what? And one time I get to 
Skylark and out and says, I could not have a bit of money. I worried myself a lesson. And one day it turned out. And one came first, one came second, I came third. Personally, I didn't see anything wrong with that because I could beat them when I wanted to beat them. But after the, term, the results were uh, read out, my father left me class to get teacher and came, put me on the foot on the desk, threw me on the lap, and started to beat me. <laughs> Next, I wonder what he beat me for. When he finished, he chucked me down and said, Never let a girl beat you to death again. And from that day, a girl never beat me in death again. <laughs> and where you grow up? You grow up here? Huh? You grow up in Rio Claro? Ah. Where you grow up? You born in Princess Town. Mm -hmm. You do everything from the Union, Confirmation. <laughs> but it's only now, as um, she goes down here, say, I said, you mean to say, all here at some of the building night? Come again, they build up, they bring up. Well, I see one or two friends. Please tell me about your career path and oh. why you um, chose it. Oh, well, um, I went to Brighton EC School in La Brie. And I did the college exhibition exam and I only passed and I stayed on and we had the school leaving certificate exam that was 12 plus and I sat it and I won a teaching bursary so that I was able to attend Bishop Ansi High School in Port Spain and from there I was placed in. I applied and got into the teaching profession. I taught at Princess Town Methodist School. I taught there for about nine months and um, after my father passed away, we came up north so that um, I was transferred to Bolton Hall Methodist School in Port of Spain. And after teaching there for almost um, two years, I attended the training college, Government Teachers Training College. And well there I went on my teaching career, which I continued until I retired. Well, I left school that is um, QRC and I went into the civil services we call it then, we call it the public service now, same thing. And um, as, a, as a clerical officer in a clerical establishment, and there I worked in, well, in two, two principal departments, the licensing office which is connected to the transport department, and then I went to work in the central statistical office. That was a very interesting office, it was a new office that was set up and they had a lot of very serious people working in working there. It was from the Central Statistical Office that I left Trinidad to go to Canada to study. So eventually when I graduated from the University of Toronto, I went to work as an economist at the Ontario Department of Labour for a period of time. And then I was invited to join. D during that period of time, Trinidad and Tobago became independent. And I was invited to join the Foreign Service of Trinidad and Tobago. So oh. I did. Yes. Yeah. And well, at, 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 while I was in the Foreign Service, I was invited to uh, come into enter politics following the upheaval in the 1970s. So I did join the government and was appointed Minister of Industry and Commerce and uh, Petroleum and Mines to uh, two ministries. That was, I succeeded the, the, the former incumbent who held the two portfolios. And I served for the next 17 years in politics in a number of ministries until the 1986 election when for the first time in its history, the People's National Movement of which I was a part and member went down to electoral defeat. And then I became a pupil teacher 
that is, they call it the monitorial system. The principal would have seen something in you, and as you did your work well, they train you to be a teacher. If you didn't accept an opportunity like this, it's either you join the police services, or you go into fishing or agriculture. So I held on to what I had and I took it to pretty high level. And when you were young, what job did you have? I had several jobs. Mm -hmm. Tell me what you used to do. I used to go and write it and write it. I used to have a class. Did you sing too? You had a job as of a singer? Of course I sing. Mm -hmm. Tell me where. Huh? Tell me about the singing. I used to sing for money. Because I used to live in that day. And where did you sing? My father does. Many places, many places. And they used to give me money, plenty money. Oh, that sounds nice. You want to sing a song for me? Not yet, tomorrow. I'm coming back tomorrow, I don't want to tell. I will sing okay. a nice one with you, you hear? I used to sing a lot. Mm -hmm. I've been. So what was your favorite song? I can't remember. Okay. And I was really in all respect a good teacher because, particularly because, to me, when I was at Granny Bear EC School, a whole school of 61 children, there were three teachers in the school, one woman in charge of the infant and son and one a young man in charge of the two and three. And I and I in charge of the of four, five and four primary. And one day up, I sent up six children for common entrance, and three of them were among the top ten in the country. <laughs> yeah. What you used to do, do you know a teacher or what? What you used to do when you were growing up? Huh? You were a teacher? What you used to do when you were growing up? Oh. I work in the store. Oh, you work in the store? Richard Sam tells me. Hmm? Richard Sam tells me. Between the and the street and my street, print the store. What's that? At a. Like I dreamed at that time. I was going to work and, you know, mm -hmm. dressing up. You used to dress and up? You were buying. I remember I had to wear a top. You get an outdoor that week, and we had to go to the prison to get in. Then I had to call them to. We had to call them to. One door I get in a week, you know. And the time after that, and all the baby was living in King Street. Hello. Hi. The big juice. Yeah. The juice. I hope you have a drink. That too much. No, drink what you want now, leave the rest. No, drink. drink. No, no, you drink it first and no. then leave back some. No, no. Too much? Yes, half of that. <laughs> well, Trinidad today, I, I feel, you know, a bit sad at the state of affairs in Trinidad today. Because when I look especially at our young people, how this respect is no longer there. Respect 
for older ones, you know, and the people as though they don't look out for each other as used to be, you know, long ago, you know, and um, I think that um, a lot of people, a lot of people my time would talk about the good old days. Yes, the good old days. And um, I think, as I said before, I think it's sad when we think of just the money. You know. So tell me, what it was like um, growing older in Trinidad? Well, you know, um, <laughs> development has its pluses and its minuses. There you, you get, I suppose, a lot of the problems you see, you hear about and uh, experience in other countries you will notice here. And it's sort of the breakdown of tradition, the, the, the lack of respect for authority, the, um, the you, you know, um, how to put it? I mean, I suppose an older person would say the value system has deteriorated from what he or she would have known growing up. But I mean, this is evolution, and I don't suppose we can quarrel with that. That is, that is the reality. The country today, um, having sort of gone through development at a very rapid pace and um, with institutions not necessarily strong enough to control excesses, has that the kind of problem that um, the absence of strong institutions will create in a society. Today is far from what it was years gone by. In the first case, we, 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 they did find some money and <laughs> it appears as though it was not evenly distributed. Next thing, there is a, a moderate here that very, very, very many people seem not to be happy about and can't understand. Thirdly, we have quite a few brains, but they have left the country. In most cases, they have left the country. And uh, Trinidad um, teaching even then. When I, as a teacher, when you speak to a child once, you know where you're going. Now, if you speak a little too loudly, that is considered abuse. And maybe his friend might be outside with a gun waiting on you. So it's uh, quite a, there's a lot of development. Oh, yes. The building and streets, you think you're in a part of New York, but that is only one part of it. And nearly anything you have in New York, you'll find lots of Trinidad homes have them. So how do you feel about getting old in Trinidad? They're like getting old. I used to sing a lot. Mm -hmm. I know that. It stopped me from singing. So what happened when you got old? I'm old now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they tell the they sit down and they, everybody. No, I used to think. When I used to think, up to when I thirty say thirty something, I used to think. I used to think why it all. You made the behavior of children in school. You didn't use a lot of that sort of crime and, and misbehavior. And then the teachers got to beat you up and they do something else. Now they stop the teachers from listening to the children doing what they want. you think will happen? Things, discipline, and they learn it from in school it started. To roll down, discipline is done. So there's no discipline. If 
wouldn't the big people know doing all kind of foolishness? Uh, we're not even afraid of the police now. They're killing police and all now. <laughs> Yeah. And now, uh, what is it like um, growing older in Trinidad? How do you feel personally, you know, like for the elderly in Trinidad? Any impressions about that? I'll tell them for myself. Mm -hmm. I am fortunate that my two children are still alive and they're in fairly good jobs. So they are able to live where to shield me from the impact of the society. So I don't feel what's going on outside there. We kill them and we shoot them and everything will hurt me. Mm -hmm. So you're the oldest person in Trinidad? Mm. She's the oldest one in Trinidad? Yes, they say so. I don't know how true not. But um, yes. I don't know how they say she's not the oldest in Trinidad. Mm -hmm. Although there are some people old. I am. I am. Oh, yeah. They had their she picture in the newspapers. Walk for the street. Walk for somewhere. Walk for the street. So how many children you had? One son. One son? But he died. Oh. He died at like 16 years old. Mm -hmm. That's Jules' father. Until oh. he died at well, I didn't go back home for all his things here. Mm -hmm. He died at um, clothes and... I scream. Um, I like to say milk in the night here. Yeah, I drink a little milk. Mm -hmm. And something I like to say sit. <laughs> but I work hard, you know. I need to I don't need to leave it. I to leave it. From the family then. To be with my husband. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, <coughs> when I was born, after she started with me, seeing all the things, good clothes, give me all the clothes, but she goes now. What do you like to drink? Me, I like wine. I like the, uh, the milk thing. <laughs> Every night, I get Joe come with um, Mixer. Mixer. Yeah, come on. Show me. Show me how the hand is going. Uh -huh. Show me. Dance the cocoa, Dance the cocoa, let me see. Thank God. Well, show me with your hand. Huh? Show me oh, with your yeah. hand. Yes. Oh. All right. <laughs> <laughs>